All right, uh, class of 2023, Dr. Prasad, first of all, thank you for that great introduction. Uh, give yourselves another round of applause. <laughs> you worked this hard to get here. I know you can do better than that. <laughs> As we are gathered here in community, I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you a story and take us back in time. Back to the times of the colonies in the Americas. Imagine, it is the mid-1700s. Massachusetts and Connecticut are scrambling to build a university. Out of their efforts, Harvard is founded in Massachusetts and Yale is founded in Connecticut. Then elites in Rhode Island get together and say to themselves, well, we need our own university. However, Building a university is not cheap. So the elites at the time began soliciting and asking their business friends for donations to build this institution that would rival the Harvards and the Yales of the time. These donations would go into paying for some of the infrastructure of the university. Speaking of business, the biggest business that existed in the state at the time was the business of slavery. In short, Wealthy white men at the time were either in the business of slavery or had businesses that were directly or indirectly tied to the slave trade. In addition to donations of money, donations included things like wood and other raw materials necessary to build some of the structures we see around us today. One of the more important commodities to donate at the time, however, was the donation of enslaved labor. In other words, slave owners would donate the labor of the people they enslaved to come and work on some of the buildings we see around us today. Most of the names of the people enslaved are unknown. But due to the efforts of a team of researchers, including Brown University students, who contributed to the slavery and justice report, we now know the name of one man, Perro Paget. He was a man enslaved by Henry Paget, who donated Pearl's labor to come and build what we now know as University Hall, which is located at the center of our campus. You all walked by, by it today on your way here. Every time I walk past that building, I can't help but place my hands on those walls, knowing that an enslaved black African, a couple of generations removed from me, laid the bricks and the very foundation of the institution that I attend and earn my degree from today. Perro's name is one of many that has been forgotten by history. Amongst the donors to build our beloved institution was Nicholas Brown, Jr. His wealth came from his family's business, the Brown Company. This company was owned by four brothers who were engaged in the slave trade. They sent ships like the Sally to the west coast of Africa. On this particular journey of the Sally, 196 black Africans were captured or stolen. Of the 196 people, 109 of them perished before their arrivals to the Americas. The rest were sold into slavery in Antigua. After this tragic journey of the Sally, one of the brothers, Moses Brown, had an epiphany after the passing of his wife. He felt that God was punishing him for his involvement in the slave trade and the injustices and immorality of the business of slavery. See, by the 1780s, this Moses Brown had emerged as one of the nation's most ardent abolitionists a cause in which he was joined by several family members, including his nephew, Nicholas Brown, Jr., the namesake of our beloved institution. Their efforts led to the gradual abolition of the slave trade in Rhode Island. What courage it must have taken Moses and Nicholas Brown to go against their own family, to go against the status quo, to stand up for what they believe and advocate for justice when the consequences could mean losing their livelihoods and the support of their loved ones. As we look around this sea of unparalleled brilliance, we are in community with people from all walks of life, race, gender, and socioeconomic class, a reality that would have been unimaginable to the abolitionists of the time. 
We must then ask ourselves, what do we owe to the memories of Peril Paget and every other enslaved person whose labor or demise, directly or indirectly, allowed us to be here today? I stand before you, a black graduate of Brown University, orating the stories. <laughs> Orating the stories of our predecessors who are voiceless. Out of all days, why did I choose today to share with you this small piece of our collective history? As James Bogan so eloquently put it, to learn from one's past and to accept one's history is not the same thing as drowning in it. It is to learn how to use it. Everyone here today is now a part of this great Brown University story. More than having a voice today, you each have a Brown University degree. We have a responsibility to leverage our education for a better tomorrow. In this crowd, we have the future leaders of our institutions. I shared this story today of all days because collective memory matters. As we step into the world, we now go into it inquiring, how can I serve as an antithesis to injustice? See, our cohort. Our generation cannot afford to sit on the sidelines for we face the threat of universal extinction. From climate change and environmental degradation to global health crises. From economic inequality and poverty to political instability and conflict. We bear the burden of facing these challenges head on. We understand that society was not built in a vacuum. Rather, society is made and ruled by humans. As such, we of this generation will serve as a beacon of hope in an ever-changing world. Where justice is denied, strike fear into the hearts of complacency and silence. Where poverty is enforced, put on the cloths of equity. Where ignorance prevails, be the voice of reason. And where any one group a class of people is made to feel like society is an organized conspiracy to oppress, rob, or degrade them. Use your education to calm their doubts and embrace them with kindness. And when in doubt, heed the words to this Negro spiritual that goes a little something like, lift every voice and sing to earth and heaven. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling seas. <coughs> Has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new days begun, let us march on till victory is won. For we are the prayers and of our ancestors, for we are the products of our ancestors' prayers and sacrifices. Within us, we hold the answers to the unknown and the keys to unlock the secrets of the universe. Our collective infinite wisdom has the potential to create new Milky Ways and the galaxies, the likes of which the universe has yet to conceive of. As we come to the end of this chapter, remember to cherish the bonds you've built here. For beyond the confines of this Ethiopia Brown created for us during our tenure, we are one another's network. <coughs> to wrap up this speech, I want to express my deepest gratitude to my mother. Raising me.
me to know better than to finish a speech without thanking her first. <laughs> As such, to my mother, Jainabu So, to all black women, <laughs> to all mothers, life and beyond. Thank you for all that you are, for your sacrifices, the sleepless nights, and all that you've done to make us who we are. To our friends, thank you for the memories and the laughter we shared during our time at Brown. They say nothing bonds people more than suffering through graduate school together. I can attest to that. Your friendship has been a source of comfort and joy both during the good times and the bad. To the esteemed faculty, thank you for your wisdom, guidance, and dedication to our education. A special shout out to Tracy Picard, Vanessa Shankar, the MPA team for this award. To the hardworking staff and administrators, Thank you for keeping this institution running smoothly day in and day out. Woo! Woo -hoo! To the alumni who paved the way for us, thank you for your generosity and support. And by the way, if any of you are hiring, <laughs> keep me and my fellow graduates in mind. We could use a job right about now. Our families, our fathers, our guardians, our loved ones, and anyone who has supported us throughout this journey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The world is in great hands with this class. Congratulations, class of 2023.